this is Leslie Ziegler, and I'm here at the Digital Health Summer Summit at UCSF, uh, sitting with another Leslie, Leslie Bator. So it, it's going to be the Leslie show for the next several minutes, um, who is a managing director at GE Ventures, which is uh, really fantastic. Well, I'll let you do the talking about this, but I know from you know old days what you guys are up to. So why don't you tell me a little bit about your background and GE Ventures? Okay, so uh, my background is I've been in the venture capital business for about 17 years, um, just a year and a half with GE and prior to that with Onset Ventures. Um, and prior to that, 19 years in the medical device business and uh, in various executive roles. And um, so I uh, came to GE Ventures because, um, uh, as I think many of you might know, the healthcare business is in an incredible state of disruption right now. Um, both in terms of how, uh, how it's being administered, how it's going to be paid, and in the mix in all this is the, the, uh, the, the new digital technologies and the capabilities that are now coming online that can be used to help change healthcare and make it more efficient and just make it better. And um, so uh, I feel that uh, I felt that GE, being a very big uh, uh, company uh, and, and a big player in the medical business, is in a very strategic business to, to be a, a player here and really make a difference. Oh, that's fantastic. So when you were in MedDevice, I mean, how does that inform how you think about investment? Which, which firms were you part of? Um, so uh, I think you know we're st we're still doing venture capital, and so there are a lot of uh, similarities across uh, doing venture capital, um, and that is you're always looking for a good team to begin with because you know pa there's nothing that substitutes for a passionate entrepreneur and some really good uh, management uh, people. Um, that's very important, um, and also um, to ensure that you're you're addressing a compelling need, and it has to be something that's really compelling and can't do without, not just a new nice to have feature. Uh, and um, that really changes things, changes up the way you're, you're practicing medicine, um, whether that be involved with a, with a, a device or a drug or a, uh, a digital type product, doesn't matter. So all the, a lot of those things are the same. Um, what I think is different about um, uh, software is that it is much more involved with the business of the way uh, the, way the uh, practice is administered and less involved in the very specific clinical physiology. Uh, and so um, that's something new and really an evolving field of how do we use these technologies in conjunction with things that we are, have used in the past or things that we'll invent that are devices and even drugs or, or drug um, uh, delivery devices and software and then uh, quite often services. So I, I think the difference is a lot of these new companies that are coming forward are a combination of all those things, drugs, drug delivery, devices, um, sensor technologies that can inform um, services and software. And, and what they're doing is they're addressing an overall solution as opposed to, here's my little widget, you know, pay me so-and-so. So I think that that's very exciting that you can think of how can we integrate all of these tools that we have uh, to make something new that's just disruptive and, and that it improves healthcare in a lot of ways, improves the cost, improves the outcome, improves the experience that the patient has. Yeah, so you were here today, you know, on a, on a panel, just came off stage. What do you think was kind of the number one takeaway uh, from the discussion on, on stage? So I was on a panel about privacy and cybersecurity issues in uh, digital health companies. And I think the thing that came away there is, uh, is for, for startup companies and entrepreneurs, you really need to think about how am I going to address my cybersecurity um, uh, functions uh, from the very beginning. Of, of my development process because um, uh, uh, if you wait till too late, then it's not going to meet the needs of the hospital and their responsibilities, and um, it's going to cost you a lot of time and money. But um, this is this is a, absolutely a part of your positioning as a digital health company. Um, uh, if you have a security breach, it can ruin your entire business from a branding standpoint as well as from a technical standpoint. Uh, because people aren't going to want to use your your service and your product if you can't protect it. So so start at the very beginning to build in what your privacy and your security issues. Great. Are there any particular areas uh, for 2015 that you're very focused on? Ideas that get you really excited? Specific sectors? Um, well, we we look at uh, across sectors. We're very interested in the digital health area, and within that, uh, like say, the combination of of services and software with devices that that can create a new way to do things. Uh, we're also interested in, in many areas of healthcare IT 
and, and, and helping providers and insurers you know, grapple with all of the changes that are coming to the industry, and we think that is a very good place to invest. And then we're not abandoning uh, the med tech traditional device area either. I mean, there is incredible advances happening, uh, particularly in neuro, uh, but in a number of areas, and we certainly still uh, want to take advantage of that. And oftentimes those technologies are married in with some of the IT technologies and analytics that, uh, that are now coming to the, uh, you know, coming to fruition. And so it's very exciting to marry those two worlds. And so we're looking at investments in that area as well. Fantastic. So entrepreneurs out there, listen up. This is make a qualified pitch. Listen to what, what actually, what phase, what scale are you guys? Series A, Series B, C, it, are you open to everything? Because um, I think that that's a major uh, issue that a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with is pitching a venture firm when they're actually not, uh, when the firm does not invest at that stage. Yes. Well, um, we are primarily investing later stage, uh, maybe 70% late stage, but we are somewhat stage agnostic in that we have done them across the, the, um, the stages, except for we really are not equipped to do a seed investing. That's not really, uh, that's very difficult for a corporate. So we have done some Series A's and I like to work with companies from the beginning, but, uh, but most of the portfolio will be, a, be later than that, more the, toward the commercialization stage. Great. I really appreciate it. that was a major thing that we grappled with it. Yeah. Anyway, so um, can you tell me where to uh, find you on Twitter, LinkedIn, all that stuff for people who want to get connected? Uh, well, you can find me on the GE uh, uh, Ventures webpage, and they have all of those connections uh, uh, on the, on the webpage for our Facebook, Twitter, all of those those accounts. Fantastic. Well, Leslie, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, and thanks to Jill and uh, uh, the whole uh, uh, crew at UCSF uh, for having me.